Hello. Hi there. Hi. I was wondering where everybody was, so I'm glad you emailed me because I was like, no one's getting on. What's happening? <laughs> I know. I've had that happen before too. No. Yeah, I wonder what that's about. But hello, you guys. Hello, hello. Everybody. hello. Great. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Hey. Hi there. Apparently, it was saying my meeting was in progress. I'm like waiting. Yeah. I'm like, is anybody getting oh. on? <laughs> Here's everybody. Okay. Hi there. Hi. Yeah. You cannot start my video. Am, am I the sole East Coaster? I think so, huh? No, we're on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait yeah. for us. <laughs> I see. Yeah, you, you folks also, I see her sitting out in bright sunshine. I'm like, that's not where I am. No, it's dark here. Yes, it's uh, not my bedtime yet, but soon. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see everybody's face. So before we go live, I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for you guys being a part of this. Um, I'm very emotional this afternoon, so I think the energy is is very potent right now. So I just wanna thank you all for being a part of this. This is, um, they're being deemed the OHO summits and I don't know how that happened, but I like it. So the one heart, one earth is becoming OHO. And um, the first one was so incredible and, and during this potent time, but this particular summit and this, this weekend that you guys are a part of feels I don't know if more so because I don't know that it's comparable, but there's a potency to this weekend that's coming from each and every one of you being a part of it. And I'm just so grateful and so honored. And, and I think so many people are going to be touched by this summit as much as they were the last one. I mean, truly, um, I'm still getting emails from people who are becoming awakened um, because of what they're watching on the last summit. And so here we are doing another one. Um, so again, thank you. And there will be so much more to come from this, I'm sure. Um, so we'll just go through it all together. So what, before we go live here, um, this will be the format all weekend. So when you come in for your class, I'm usually on about 10 minutes early so that you can come on and make sure your video and everything uh, is working. Sorry, I've got some background noise in my street and stuff. But anyway, so you'll be able to adjust your videos and all those things for your class and then we'll go live and I'll manage that for you so you don't have to do any of that. You get to just show up and teach and share and, and expand people's knowledge. After your class is complete or your workshop, um, I'll be able to go back in and edit the video. Um, so what that means is I hey. can cut out, <laughs> I'll be able to cut out anything from the beginning that needs to be cut out, but I also go in and add in the show notes. So I'll add in our affiliates, um, which now includes block therapy. Deanna, mm. I'm obsessed with my block. Awesome. I got it six days ago, I think. And I just, I'm like obsessed. I can't believe how sore my body is. <laughs> um, it's so sore. But uh, anyway, so Block Therapy is one of them and Dirty Coffee and Dry Farm Wines. So I'm plugging them tonight, but also throughout. They're just really clean and beautiful and incredible companies that are a part of this and supporting us. Um, and so um, that's my story about that. But I'll go in and add in their notes well as your bio and your links. So that will go directly into the YouTube description post the class. Um, so I'll go in and do that and add in the thumbnail um, and add it to the playlist and all of those things and also some keywords based on your class and your practice. It'll help people find you on YouTube. The amazing thing is that when we live stream on YouTube, it's not just the people subscribed that get information from us. It's also anybody who's interested in the keywords of the channel and the classes and all of that will get called in as well. So what happened last time is each day we had more and more people registering on One Heart, One Earth. And I imagine that'll be the case. We're up to about 500 or just over 500. And that was when I checked at 10 a.m. So I'm really not sure at this point um, where we're at with that, but I keep seeing it. It'll, it'll be closer to the thousand mark, I think, by the end of this on Sunday. So um, anyway, so I'm going to 
tonight I'm going to go live. I'm going to introduce the summit. And then what I want to do is go around and have each one of you share who you are and what you're offering this weekend. I think it's going to be a really great way for everyone to connect in with, you know, who all of you are and also what they're interested in participating in and, and getting them excited about the weekend. Um, I think it'll be really nice. And then Katie is so kind to end us with some sound with her bowls and her gong and, and some music to end um, our circle tonight. So it'll be um, short and sweet. Um, what I will do is on my end, I'll be pinning up your video. So I'm gonna start out at the beginning with a gallery view so everyone can see everyone. But then when you're talking, I'll, I'll say your name. I'll be like, okay, Katie, you know, why don't you share, you know, and kind of get us through the circle. Um, but I'll pin you up and all that really means and all you have to know about it is you'll be the one that'll be on the main screen versus somebody else talking or, or the main gallery view. So the only thing I ask from you guys is to manage your mute buttons um, during this. I know I'm outside, so as much as I love the birds and everything, I'll mute myself when you guys are talking as well. So do you guys have any questions or thoughts or anything before we get started? I'm so excited. Just a few uh, uh, simple, uh, how, how, how long do you want us to give an intro? One minute, four minutes, three minutes? I think just a few minutes. I don't think it has to be super, super short, but I think just share, you know, uh, who you are and your background and whatever you feel called to share, honestly. Okay. I'd say not, I wouldn't do 10 minutes, but right. if you're talking for two, three, four minutes and you want to share about your class, if, if you're talking for three or four or five minutes, I think that's totally fine. You know, this is the chance for all of these amazing people to check in. And I got to tell you, we have like a hundred people who were every day, every minute of this last summit. And they're very excited about this one. I've already been getting emails. So there's definitely folks that are, are ready to dive into this. So, all right, you guys ready? Yes. I all right. Guess. I'm so excited. Yes. So on my end, this is the order I see in the gallery view so that you guys know kind of where I'm headed. But I think it'll, right now I'm seeing Katie, Deanna, Satyam, um, then Julie, then Cairo, then Janet, and then Angela and April, you guys are together, and then Sharon. So that's like the order I'm seeing. So it's probably the order I'll go. So that's just something for you guys to know. Um, when I go live here, it takes about 20 to 30 seconds for it to go live. But what I've learned is that is a delay, meaning that as soon as I say, okay, I'm going to go live, don't talk because otherwise it shows up on the YouTube live, even though we aren't seeing ourselves live yet. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, Lisa? Yes. Are you going to um, prompt us that it's our time? Yes. Okay. I, thank you. <laughs> yes. I will just say, okay, Janet, you share, you know, Okay. Go ahead and share it's your turn or whatever. I'll, I'll let you know. So I'll kind of lead us all through this. So, and I'm going to open it up from a quote from my buddy Yengar. So um, that's where I'm going to start and thanking everybody and all of that. So I'll give a little spiel and then we'll get started. All right. Are you guys ready? You bet. All right. Here we go. Good evening. Good evening, beautiful seekers, the diamond beauties and the light beings, the empaths, the truth seekers, the yogis, the meditators, the dreamers, the creatives. Welcome to another incredible One Heart, One Earth Summit. Our focus and our mission is to create a resource of light to give you resources and tools through this ascension process. And I'm very excited about this weekend and I'm so excited for everybody who's joining in. I know a lot of you guys are coming in live right now. So just keep coming in and, and you'll, you're not gonna miss anything, I promise. 
but um, this weekend is all about movement. And movement, no matter if it's physical or, or energy, it's really all the same. Some of us move energy by physically moving our body, and some of us, when we move energy, suddenly we have to move our body. It, it all works together. And we have so many beautiful practices this weekend to help each and every one of us move energy out of our body. And it couldn't come at a more perfect time because for most of us, the last four to six weeks, we haven't moved our body very much. Um, I'm very blessed that my yoga mat doesn't take up much space and you can still do that anywhere. Um, but a lot of us have been sitting in front of computer screens and, and some of us are in lockdown in places in the country where you can't even go outside for 48 hours at a time. Um, and so, not being able to move has created some dense energies in the body and in the mind and in the spirit. And so this weekend is your opportunity to connect in with yourself and with all of us and, and with the body. And I'm just so thrilled about it. Um, our One Heart, One Earth Summit, you can still register for it. It's free. And why you want to register isn't just for this weekend schedule, but for everything that's going to come. This is not the first summit and it won't be the last. Um, and there will be many teachings and One Heart, One Earth has become a collaborative effort. Um, it has become a space for articles that have been written, for photos that have been taken, for art that has been created, for all sorts of beautiful information. We even have a video gallery where you can join in and just learn. Um, and this resource is just going to get bigger and bigger as we have more and more contributors coming in. And so um, joining One Heart, One Earth means that you are going to have access to all of that um, and all of the continued efforts from myself and all the facilitators and contributors around the world. So just keep that in mind. So you can go to oneheartoneearth.net and register for this summit and any future ones at any time. And I'd also like to say thank you to our affiliates, Block Therapy, which I'm so honored to have Deanna Hansen here with us this weekend and tonight, so you'll get to meet her momentarily. Um, and so their information is up on One Heart, One Earth, so you can just link through and see what they have to offer, and you'll have a whole preview of that this weekend through the summit. And you had part of it in the last summit, so you also had access to it then as well. I'd also like to say thank you to Purity Coffee. Um, supplementation is hard to find right now. Um, a lot of folks have bought it up. And so Purity Coffee is not only the cleanest coffee for a moldy like me who has to watch my mycotoxin uh, intake because of my health, um, but it's, it's really clean and full of antioxidants. So it's actually a good way to supplement right now and to help your immune system and your body if you're a coffee drinker. Um, and also thank you to Dry Farm Wines. Um, many of us uh, empaths don't drink that much, if at all, but if you are going to, um, they also are low mycotoxin, low sulfite, low sugar, all those things. So it's a really clean alternative for you as well. And all of those links are available on the One Heart, One Earth website and will be in the show notes as well. So I want to talk before we introduce each and every facilitator briefly about Iyengar and his incredible gifts to the, the practice of yoga and to really life. And his book, Light on Life, speaks about the movement of the body. And he says, you know, when you talk about the, the petals of, of the practice of yoga and the yoga sutras, you know, meditation is actually a at the end. It's the eighth pedal. <laughs> it's towards the end. Um, and that really moving the body, working the body and the energy of the body. And really as a, as a psychic and a healer, to me, the, the physical body has the energy component, but working that is what brings you into a space of stillness and into a place where you can access what meditation can bring to you. And so his belief system and what he shares in, in his book or one of his books um, is that truly you can't even access that still and quiet mind until you've moved the body and you've become flexible and you've released a lot of the toxic burden that's in your body. And so I just think that's really beautiful and something I wanted to bring as a thought as you go into this movement summit is, you know, we're gonna move 
toxicity out of our body physically and in our energy body and our etheric DNA and our physical DNA. We're, we're shifting and transforming. We're genetic transformers, transforming all of that through all of the practices being brought to the summit. And so just note that, you know, what are you moving out? What do you want to move out? Think of your intention tonight before you go to bed. What are you going to clear? But also just notice and be an observer this weekend. Observe what is coming up for you and take note of it. Keep your journal handy. I think a lot of you have been through the summit. No, keep a journal handy through this process. Um, but if you're new to the One Heart, One Earth Summit, it's important to, to continue to process this information through journaling about it and talking about it. And you're welcome to comment. Um, I see some of you guys are joining in and starting to comment in the live chat. Absolutely do that. Um, we will get back to each and every one of you in the, the video chats as well. So with all of that said, I want to introduce each and every one of our facilitators and have them share a little bit about what they have to offer so that you guys know what's coming this weekend. And so I want to start with Katie. And Katie, go ahead and share who you are and what you have to offer. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Katie Sinnott, and uh, I'm a yogi. I teach many different types of yoga. Um, as well as a visual artist, and I do a lot of work with sound healing, so bowls and gong. Um, this weekend, I'm really excited to share a practice from the Kundalini Yoga and meditation tradition, which is one of my main practices. Um, if you're new to Kundalini Yoga, um, it's a very old practice that combines work with powerful breath work, um, very rhythmic, repetitive movements, a lot of work with the arms, <laughs> um, as well as work with mantra, so using your voice, using sacred sound, um, and meditation. And all of those practices are intermingled together, again, in these sets that sometimes I describe them almost like recipes that have been held, you know, sacred for a very long time, so they're very specific. Um, which breaths are combined with which movements. Um, so it might be a new experience if you're, for you. Um, if you're new to Kundalini, you should check it out. So it'll be at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. And the, or so 11 a.m. mountain time, I should say, because we have people from all over the place coming in. Um, so the set I'll be teaching this Sunday in particular is going to be all about bringing both heaven and earth together. So it's going to be a very grounding practice, actually, setting out down our roots so that once we start to lift the energy and kind of ascend up into these higher spaces, we can use the things that we glean from those spaces and bring it back down and really use it um, in our day to day and feel it in our physical bodies. Um, so um, one last note I should say about the Kundalini practice that I really love is that it's, you know, both you're, you are really moving your body in interesting ways that you might not otherwise experience. Um, some of the movements are really, um, really different and like I said, rhythmic. Um, but you're not just moving your physical body, you're really getting an adjustment for all aspects of yourself. So it's a very holistic vitality that I experience when I practice Kundalini. So anyway, really excited to share and hope to see some of you there. So thank you, Lisa. Yes, thank you so much, Katie. Thank yeah. you. And yeah. we're gonna go now to Deanna Hansen. Deanna, I'm putting you up on the screen here. So welcome, I'm so excited to have you if you wanna share about yourself and what you're offering. Thank you so much, Lisa. I am absolutely thrilled to be here and amongst these incredible people to share how to move the body in a safe and productive way. And so I've been developing block therapy and fluid isometrics now for over 20 years. And it started with a self, or sorry, it started with a therapeutic practice, fluid isometrics. I was teaching therapists how to move through the layers of fascia in the body all the way to the root, which is at the bone. Fascia will grip and adhere to bone with a force of up to 2,000 pounds per square inch. And this is truly what blocks blood and oxygen and energy flow in the body. So to be able to release that tissue from the bone, from the root, is an amazing way to create fluidity and flow in the body. So with block therapy, 
we use a tool. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit about how that looks tomorrow. But right now, because we are all in this state of the world, a lot of us are at home with our loved ones. And what I really want to share this weekend is how to use your partner to create decompression of the fascia. So uh, block therapy is an exercise, a therapy and a meditation all built into one simple practice. And that can be translated to using parts of your body. You can use your hands, your elbows, your knees, um, basically pressure over time creates heating of the tissue. And the longer we stay in the tissue, the deeper the adhesions are that melt so that we can improve that flow. So the hour that I'm going to be sharing will be a bit of a combination of demonstrating the block positions and then sharing how we can do that same work with a partner. And really at the end of the day, it's all about connecting to that diaphragmatic breath. When we're breathing diaphragmatically, we are feeding the body up to six times the oxygen. And because of the way the fascia grips and adheres to bone, we're basically locked away from the full potential of that muscle. So we're gonna be sharing how to really simply release it, how to engage the diaphragm effectively, moving the negative emotion, the toxins uh, efficiently out of the body so that we can have greater movement within our tissue. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Lisa. And we're gonna go, yes, we're gonna go to Janet. Janet, I'm gonna put you up here. Janet Rose, there you go. Hello. Welcome. Great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go for it, go ahead. Right. So uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. I'm just so very grateful for this opportunity. Um, a little bit about me. I'm actually an attorney and um, have spent the last 30 years really working with some of the most vulnerable populations, some of the folks that have been invisible and forgotten. And I also come from a, uh, a deeply rich mixed background of traditional Mexican Catholic and uh, Quaker inspired humanist um, and what I would call you know Rocky Mountain skeptic maybe um, is is my faith tradition coming into this um, but in 1990 I had a very deep and powerful experience that really changed my life I was 12 years old and really influenced all of this work that I've been doing over the last 30 years and now I'm I'm in a point where I'm really wanting to transition back to that original message and what I'm going to be sharing over the weekend is about Mother Mary um, obviously, I come from a Catholic background, and, and this experience is very wrapped up in Mother Mary for me. And like many, many folks who came from that Catholic background, Mother Mary tended to be our only lifeline into the Divine Feminine on any sort of level. And so what I really want to do is I really want to liberate her from those cages that other people have put around her and try to define her and try to contain her in and really unleash those very powerful messages of love. I think there's a lot of people who have woundedness, especially about them, their mother relationships, um, that feeling of unconditional love. And what I really wanna do is strip away some of that language that has been used to define her and really help people find themselves in her. And at that, know that some of the, her core messages are that you're never alone, that all you have to do is ask for help but that you also have to be accountable for yourself. You also have to be mindful of not going into excess. Um, you have to do some mindful sacrifices for those of those excesses and really get to that point of purification. And I don't mean virginity. So if someone is coming into this uh, with a very traditional view of who Mary is, they're gonna be a little bit shocked. But for those who have been estranged from that relationship, who have been estranged from that ideal of the great mother, that's, that's who I really want to call in, um, in particular, for this class. I really want to make her very accessible, share the love and the passion that I have found and the inspiration that I have found for my own career and my own life uh, path through her, and then share that with you. And hopefully others can, can find that movement of heart, um, I think, is where I'm going to be focusing. So I'm at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, mountain time. So you'll get to sit for mine. Uh, we won't be moving, but hopefully we will be doing some heart opening um, as we go. And that's really the goal of that class. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you. It's going to be so amazing. 
All right, we're gonna go over to April and Angela. I'm gonna pin you guys up here. And uh, so happy to see you ladies' faces and whichever one of you wants to share first, you can. Hi there, I'll go first. And I'm Angela Phillips and I have a yoga studio in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And I just wanna let you all know, I live five blocks away from the Edgar Casey Center here, so. Um, that's kind of an exciting thing. Um, I, April teaches at my studio and I have been studying with a teacher since 1993 and it's a form of breath work. It's not asana based, although I do teach asana and am very inspired by anger. But what I'm going to be offering is a class called the triune breath and opening to stillness. So this class will experience a very yin approach to breath work in three different um, postures, simple postures, Tadasana, Sukhasana, and Shavasana. And in those shapes, we'll be inviting the innate breath to come out of its dormant state. And as Iyengar says, when our innate breath comes out of its innate state, we receive a cosmic trans fusion. And I love that languaging. So I'll be inviting you all to a very contemplative and quiet practice, one of exploring the more subtle realms. I am teaching, um, let's see, mountain time. Nine. It would be 9am on Sunday morning. So thank you. And I'm April Meganson, and I'm so honored to be here. Thank you, Lisa, for putting this whole thing together. It's just so exciting and amazing to be surrounded virtually by all these amazing people and uh, physically too, as well. <laughs> um, I'll be teaching two classes. I'm a yoga therapist, um, and that work has been really profound. Uh, so. I'll be bringing yoga therapy into, into my work, obviously. So tomorrow night, Saturday, I'll be teaching at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. We're at 7, we're 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, so we're like, we don't know what time. We'll be here when we're meant to be here, but you know how that goes. So um, tomorrow will be techniques for deep rest. And so what I'll be offering is um, really a powerful practice on balancing our nervous system, our respiratory system, especially at this time, um, and how to really kind of bypass all of these things that we think are so challenging and just letting us rest in our, our natural si silence, our natural stillness of the, of the great heart. So that will be tomorrow night at, again, 5 p.m. Mountain Time and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. And then the next day on Sunday, I'm going to be offering um, at 1, 1 p.m. Mountain Time and 3, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know why this is so challenging. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be offering Unlocking Your Potential by Meeting Your Center. And so what we'll be doing that hour is some really strong poses from our, our center. You know, the uh, the Chinese call it the Dantian, the Japanese, the Hara, that power center. And when we can unlock that power center, we all have it. You know, doctors, I often have clients come and students come to me saying, my doctor tells me my core is weak. And I don't believe that that's true. I believe that we need to find the tools to find the potential of the strength of our center and then enhance that and move out of that, move from that place. So that's what I'll be offering, and that's what I'm so excited to be able to, to share. So thank you again, Lisa, for all of your really strong work. We're very, very honored. <laughs> oh, I was muted. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like not talking. No one can hear me. Thank you. I'm honored to have you as well. I mean, I'm just listening to everybody, just taking it in, going, oh my gosh, I just can't wait. Um, we're going to go to Satyam. I'm going to put you up here. Welcome. Hey, namaskar, everyone. It's so wonderful to be here with everybody and to meet you uh, in virtual reality. It's quite nice to, uh, to see everyone and see your uh, vibration, your introduction and, and all those good things and great to be part of the team. Uh, my name is Satyam. 
I've been involved in yogic lifestyle for about 30 years now. I spent um, much time living in India in, uh, in an ashram with uh, Yogacharya. Um, what drew me, drew me to yoga was the holistic approach, that there were no timeouts, that every moment was part generating momentum towards an active ideal, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and that it all worked together in one cohesive, dynamic, inspiring manner, which was something I was searching for. And fortunately, I got pulled into it at, a, at, a, at a, the right time. And uh, so this, um, in, in today's, uh, uh, this weekend seminar, uh, I'm also an East Coaster, uh, 11 a.m. East Coast time, 9 a.m. Uh, mountain time. The other two time zones, you can do the math on that, but this will be Saturday morning. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of gentle yoga. It'll be a slow vinyasa class. Um, one thing that, uh, that is not always commonly known about yoga is that it's the only exercise in the world from a physical perspective that is glandular based. The poses put pressure and deep pressure on various glands and the glands then affect the mind. So it's a very much of a cohesive complementary practice to meditation. We go, meditation goes from the inside out and uh, the movement aspect of yoga, the asana practice goes from the outside in. And by putting pressure on those glands, you tame the mind, channelize the mind, calm the mind. And it's a really wonderful vehicle um, as anyone who's practiced yoga has experienced it. That's why you want to go into a class Everybody's talking, very happy to see each other. And at the end, everyone's quiet and mind is still and everyone feels very connected. They talk with the eyes. And so we just want to experience some of that, some of the wonder of yoga through movement, through uh, we'll get some breath work in, we'll do some meditation, we'll end with a nice parable, we'll generate some community and um, we'll move what the yogis say from a point of, uh, point of, dynamism through refinement and ultimately to a point of sharing, cultivation, love, and connection. And I look forward to sharing that and participating with everyone tomorrow. So again, it'll be Saturday, 11 a.m. East Coast time. But uh, great to be here with all of you and a pleasure to be part of the team. Namaskar. Thank you so much. So well said. So well said. And now we're going to go over to Cairo. I'm going to put you up here. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you. Yes. Hi, Lisa. Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, before everything else, I'm, I'm so happy to be here at this time, this very important time for everyone. But this is a major turning point for me to be at this platform for the first time. And I would like to thank you, Lisa, for creating this space for like-minded souls to get together, to partake this beautiful energy. Um, I'm Kairo Rosha. I'm a Tibetan, Japanese, and Chinese medicine practitioner. And I've been working with energy medicine for the past over 30 years. And my journey began in Japan when I, went, when I lived in Japan and uh, I studied Japan for four years. So lots of things happen. And one thing that I, it's all these years um, that I've been involved with um, energy and, 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 and medicine is that I learned that the concept of chi energy is not so abstract as people may think. It's so real, so tangible. It's something we can easily practice in our lives. And in most of my uh, seminars, Whenever I have a chance, I always like to share this. Uh, obviously, I won't be able to do this the way I would on stage, but one of my, my ideas for this, this uh, beautiful seminar is to share this idea that energy is real, tangible, you can use it. The second concept that I would like to partake is that true healing, true, true, true healing is self-healing. There's nothing I can do for you that your body can't do better. And the number three is for the body to heal itself. It requires two main things. One, a clean blood and your right frequency. And exactly what we're going to be talking about this um, uh, tomorrow at 9, nine um, Eastern time 
is the concept of frequency. It, 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 came, it, came, it came as a natural development for me. He said, I've been working with energy for so long and of late, I've been you know, more interested in, in how does it work? How can I bring the energy up? And more than that, more than frequency, there's something I'd like to share with you that very few people know and is very dear to me, the concept that there is a, an energetic blueprint behind the immune system. So if you want your immune system to work, to function as it should, as it planned, you work on the energetic aspect of it and everything starts falling into place beautifully. So I'm very enthusiastic about it and I hope I can share this the same way I would on stage <laughs> live. But also besides thanking you, Lisa, for having me here, I need to thank uh, Julie Hoyle as you know, it's a very dear friend of mine and a, a sister in the spirit that nudged me into coming to this <laughs> stage. And I hope you have as much fun as I have by sharing this tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I am honored to have you. I mean, yes, I am so excited. And frequency and sound and genetics are my my passion so i'm excited so many of you have aspects of that which is so amazing so thank you we're gonna go to julie now julie i'm gonna put you up there you are there you are Welcome. awesome go for it. thank you thank you i'm so excited to be here um, my name is julie ware and i discovered energy healing and um, different forms of healing about 10 years ago. I felt like there weren't really any true answers until I was exposed to the way that energy can really shift things in your life. Um, and 10 years ago was probably the worst time of my life. And um, after I made it through that phase, I kept hearing about something called the Akashic Records. And it seemed like it was really far away. It's, you know, it, it was explained to be a big vast library with all of this knowledge. Um, and it, it turned out to be one of the most interesting things I've ever come across. Um, and so once I started hearing about that, I kept following through and that led me to become an Akashic Record consultant and teacher. So I do readings and workshops to teach others about the Akashic Records. And I also work with different energy techniques to assist others on their path. and. Um, recently became an Ayurvedic health counselor. So um, just all forms of healing are very healing for me. And it's great to see other people go on that journey as well. And as many of you know, and as many, uh, you know, like the other people have, and the practitioners have been talking, you know, what we need right now and what we can always use is more joy and peace. And so the Akashic Records one of the most beautiful places and there's infinite space and knowledge and there's also infinite healing. So in the session I'm offering tomorrow, we're going to visit a very special place and it's very specific. We're going to take a journey into the Akashic Records healing room. And you might ask, what does that have to do with movement? And, you know, just like we move our physical bodies to create shifts and raise our vibration, we can also move our energetic bodies too. And so the intention of that journey tomorrow is just really to bring joy and happiness at a soul level and to clear the energy and create space for new beginnings. You know, we might, we can remove barriers and we can also really just connect with our soul to make us feel better. So I can't wait to share this with you tomorrow. And tomorrow the session is at 3 p.m. Mountain time. So I hope to see everybody there. Thank you, Lisa and everybody. Thank you, Julie. I'm so excited to have you too. Thanks. And I think last but not least is Sharon. I'm going to pin you up here. Let me get you up here. Hi, Sharon. Welcome. Hi. Oh, there you are. Good All evening. Right. Go, go for it. How is everybody? Thank you. I'm going to be presenting tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, I am a Pilates instructor. I started doing Pilates about 20 years ago and um, really rely on it. 
as something that helps improve my energy and my relationship with myself. Um, so I'm very excited and want to thank Lisa and the entire OHO family for welcoming me to this event. Uh, I decided to combine a little bit of Pilates, um, which Joseph Pilates actually called the art of contrology. It did not take his name until he died years later. Um, but his first book was The Art of Contrology. And I decided to do something unique and combine it with a little numerology, which I've been studying recently during this downtime we've had. Um, so I created a special Pilates class based on my life path number, which is number four. So um, I'm going to start the workshop by explaining what the life path number is and then calculating my own and showing people how to calculate theirs. Um, and those numbers just help you come into alignment. Uh, and find your life's path similar to Pilates. So bringing them together, um, we're gonna learn our life path number and then practice about 30, 40 minutes of Pilates together um, based on a uh, sequence I designed uh, with the compelling number four. Um, so I look forward to that and to also uh, explaining a little bit about Joseph Pilates and who he was as a healer. So uh, after the class, people will feel restored and rejuvenated, and I really look forward to connecting with all of you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you guys all so much. And um, most of you guys know me now, but for any of you guys that are new and joining in, my name's Lisa Gunshore, and um, I'm also teaching a class. I wasn't sure if I would or not, but I'm going to. I'm going to be teaching compassionate yoga on Sunday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time, and um, my journey with yoga was not a physical one in the sense that I I did not identify as a fitness person. <laughs> And if you have seen my pictures, uh, when I began my spiritual journey 15 years ago, I weighed 250 pounds. And my journey of losing 100 pounds plus at this point had nothing to do with a diet. It was all energy work from the very beginning. And I found yoga intuitively through movements in my body to eliminate energy in my body that was con creating contracts. Um, when you talk about the Akashic Records, Julie, you know, I had contracts that was keeping that weight in my body. And I started with gentle yoga, like Satyam's gonna teach. And that journey took me to a place where um, I went through another health crisis in 2011 and my nervous system shut down and um, had neurological problems and I went back to yoga and I found yoga practices that balance the right and left brain and I found Tibetan frequency practices and practice the sacred syllables um, and brought my nervous system back from depletion and destruction uh, to a healthy state and then I had another health crisis four years ago in 2016 um, and was exposed to toxic mold, which again, shut down my nervous system and I lost feeling in 85% of my body. I could not walk, I could not get out of bed and I had a death experience and I went back to yoga and I went back to my mat and it saved me again. And the movements and the practices and the journey brought me back and I wouldn't be here today with anyone doing any good <laughs> if it wasn't for my spiritual practices and my yoga practices and those yoga practices have opened me up to now a new journey and I was grateful for Deanna coming I mean each one of you are here for a reason I mean every single one of you that has spoken tonight is here for a reason for me and uh you know now I've got my block and uh, I'm digging into the fascia and that's a part of my own practice as an Ayurvedic practitioner and so that's who I am when it comes to movement. Um, I have learned through discipline, spiritual discipline, that movement is everything and movement brings you closer to yourself. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and you become who you really are inside by working the outside. Uh, working the outside works the inside and working the inside works the outside and all works together in this lovely circular pattern. And so um, this, this whole weekend is very, very sacred to me. Um, and all of you are bringing something that is so important and needed to every single person. So I thank you all for being here. And um, my class, Compassionate Yoga, is truly about loving yourself and giving yourself permission not to be perfect on your mat um, and to be able to hold space. And my Compassionate Yoga practice is a combination of Tibetan Yantra Yoga. Um, so we'll be starting with the nine breaths of purification. So I'm listening to each one of you talk and breathing, 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 so important. So we'll begin with the nine breaths of purification and go from there. So um, that's what you can expect from me this weekend. And so I'm going to put us all back on our gallery view for everybody watching so we can see each and every one of us because it's such amazing energy. When you look at all nine blocks, it's like, whoa. Um, and so welcome to each and every person who is joining in now or later these replays are available on the youtube channel and the youtube channel is buddhist biohacker um, and that mission is all about healing the body through holistic practice which each and every one of us is bringing here and um, the schedules are up this is available for you to access. I know many of you will be accessing it through tonight and through the weekend, and that's perfectly fine. And um, I just look forward to each and every one of you. I mean, really, um, what a gift. What a gift to all of us to be a part of this. And I'm, I cannot say how humbled and honored I am to have you want to be a part of this um, for all of the facilitators here. It, it means a lot to be able to collaborate and connect um, but it also means a lot for you to gift your, your, your education and your training and your passions with everyone who's watching and, and allowing them to connect with that at home during a time where a lot of people cannot leave their home. So thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who's listening and watching now and later. And we'll be back at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Um, so it's a good thing the Coloradans are the early risers. The folks on the East Coast have it easy, um, but we all are up at 5 a.m. climbing mountains for some reason in this state. So um, we'll be starting at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. That's 6 a.m. Pacific Time, so Californians got to get up even earlier. Um, and that's 9 a.m. on the East Coast. And we had, we had folks joining from Serbia and from the Bahamas and from England. And even somebody wrote me from Africa in the last summit. So um, no matter when you tune in here, if you can't get to the live, you're gonna get to the replay. So just remember, no matter where you are in the world, we are here for you. And um, again, one last time, oneheartoneearth.net, you can tune in there. We have contributions up. So there's beautiful articles and things on there and there will be more to come. And thank you again, you guys, just thank you. I have to end just by saying, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you, how, how, how. It's just an honor and a blessing to have all of you here. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm.